point to some of the events that are coming forth. And um, let's look at the book of Genesis. And um, in the life of Joseph, we all know about the famous seven years famine and the seven years um, uh, prosperity. Before that was prosperity and famine. In Genesis chapter 41, Joseph interpreted Pharaoh's dream in verse 25. And these things are, these things are predetermined. We are still in the seven year prosperity. And uh, the years of prosperity will proceed all the way to 2020. And it might not be exactly uh, uh, day and night, but you will see the transition into the recession years from 2020 to 2027. Then begin the war years, which is 2027 to 2034. In Genesis chapter 41, it says here, as he interpreted verse 25, Joseph said to Pharaoh, the dreams of Pharaoh are one. God has shown Pharaoh what he is about to do. The seven good years are seven years, and the uh, good cows are seven years, the seven good hates are seven years. The dreams are one. And the seventeen and the ugly cows which came out after them are seven years, and the seven empty heads blighted by the east wind are seven years of famine. This is the thing which I spoken to Pharaoh. God has shown Pharaoh what he is about to do. In these seven years of great plenty will come through all the land, but after them seven years of famine will arise, and all the plenty will be forgotten in the land of Egypt, and the famine will deplete the land. Now, jump over very quickly uh, to the time when the famine actually took place. After the seven years of prosperity, they seem to be uh, very fast over. In verse 46, chapter 41, Joseph was 30 years old when he stood before Pharaoh. Now verse 47, in seven plentiful years, the ground brought forth bound, abundant, abundantly. So he gathered all, all the food of the seven years. And uh, there was so much in verse 49 that he stopped counting because it was immeasurable. In verse 53, then the seven years of plenty which were in the land of Egypt ended. And the seven years of famine began to come. See, it was not a day and night kind of thing. It slowly moved into the other uh, years of famine. They began to come. The famine was in all lands. No country was accepted. But in all the land of Egypt, there was bread. And I've used Bible verses to support some of the prophecies that are coming. This year, 2016, is a year of transition. We are already uh, two years into the years of prosperity. We got another five odd years to 2020. And uh, it is the fourth point in this year is that you will be able to identify the places of refuge. How will you identify the places of refuge or where to go? Because there are many, many pockets and there are general countries. We're given some general countries like uh, the eastern side of Canada, uh, Brazil, Argentina, and all those places. How will you identify the places of refuge? You don't wait until the famine. It's a bit too late. But you can identify those places because they are distinct that in those places, God is prospering the agriculture. And the weather is blessing those places. We talk about coming famine. Famine is caused by world weather. Beyond human control. As you all know, like the places like, uh, is it uh, Machu Picchu or some of these places, where there are great civilizations and then suddenly the weather change. Uh, same like uh, some areas of... Uh, uh, Europe in the northern side, Iceland, uh, the, uh, all those Vikings and all that. Some of them, the weather changed and it almost destroyed entire community. Uh, and, uh, so this, this weather, we have to move and flow with it. And there are some things that are happening on the earth where like I say there will be great drought that happen in North America. And the water is being drained out. The angels are actually at work changing the scenario. If they call it, this is what the angel use. Realignment, realignment, and uh, so they're realigning all things. And 
you can identify the places that are places of refuge in this year transition thus be able to start investing you know how you identify from these words how did Egypt became the place of refuge and food not just in the time of famine famine time obvious everybody can see it. you're the only place with food in the years before the famine they had extra the extra started seven years early and in the same way this is a year of transition the countries cities and places or pockets of refuge you will begin to see the weather bringing lots of good rain lots of of uh, ability to build the agricultural industry in other words God is prospering them agriculturally even in the years of prosperity far beyond normal okay here's a question during the years of prosperity other places are also having enough food correct what was different about Egypt they had a lot a lot more than normal they got more than they could eat whereas all the other countries got just enough to eat and then when the famine come they got nothing to eat only Egypt has it so when did they prepare for the years of famine in a time of prosperity which is why item number four for those of you and because the coming uh, the coming famine and recession that is going to take place uh, is going to affect everyone food especially will become scarce uh, all comes together in the end of the by the time the tsunami hits and the earthquake that affects the whole world hits in 2029 uh, it's too late but way before that people are moving the great exodus that will take place starts roughly about the year 2022 and we'll be greatly involved with that uh, so from 2022 but even right now 2016 you can identify them this year that is the, uh, the ability that God did watch the agriculture watch the weather watch the extraordinary blessings on the land while every other country keeps get, uh, get like in, in North America they're getting more and more uh, droughts less water resources they're digging deeper and deeper pumping water from the uh, from the table under underground tables uh, these places continue to have good rains and plenty of water and we'll be talking about that two three years ago and recently in Australia this year for the first time a uh, place called Lake Irie started to fill up. It was totally dry. Started for the first time. So this year, and that was just last year, 2015, and over the last week of rain or so, the uh, last two, three weeks of rain. But by this year, it will be obvious where the cities or the places or countries of refuge are. Uh, God is making the difference. A line is being drawn in transition so that people will know to go from where to where places from uh, places that will be in the deep uh, famine into the places of refuge that's the fourth thing that will take place fifth thing that will take place and let's look at Amos chapter 1 and it's linked to Isaiah again but let's look at the book of Amos chapter 1 Amos chapter 1. Uh, something happened. Remember, I talked about uh, the year in Isaiah chapter 6, in the year the King Uzziah died, that uh, Isaiah rose up and he had visions of the Lord. And I talked about the outpouring of the Spirit in chapter 2 of Joel, that is going to happen this year. And uh, Amos chapter 1, this year will be significant. There will definitely be outpouring on people who are hungry for God it's almost like uh, like many people can trace the Pentecostal revival 
to the year 1906, correct? And then from there, a lot of outpourings came all over. We have in our church history records of a particular year which is significant, 1906, or the year that uh, First Great Awakening uh, under uh, John Wesley, Charles Wesley, and George Whitfield, Second Great Awakening under Charles G. Finney, and Father Nash, and all these people. We have dates. History will look back at the year 2016 and realize that an outpouring has begun. Now, what was happening the past two, three years? All those are preparation years, preparing our life. Outpouring is something that began to take an effect on the community at large. It is happening this year. That's why Jesus talked about the amplification of the voice that cry at midnight. Right. And in Amos chapter 1, you probably found it by now, Something happened that most people don't realize when they read the Bible. In Amos chapter 1 verse 1, the words of Amos, who was among the sheep breeders of Tekoa, which he saw concerning Israel in the days of Uzziah. Interesting, everything points to the days of Uzziah. King of Judah. In the days of Jeroboam, the son of Joash, king of Israel, two years before the earthquake. Not the fact. Two years before the earthquake, Amos, a shepherd man who became a prophet, began to prophesy about judgment on the nations. With the judgment coming on the nations and the shaking that's coming, there was a side effect in the natural of an earthquake. So the earthquake was so important that when the Bible scholars recorded the prophecies, they even point to, oh, this happened two years before the earthquake. It looks like a very major time event. Now, turn to Zechariah chapter 14. Zechariah chapter 14. And you will hear these words about the earthquake in the days of Uzziah. Zechariah chapter 14. In Zechariah chapter 14, Notice a prophesy about Jesus' second coming. When he lands on the Mount of Olives, and the Mount of Olives is split to two in verse four. But then you notice something else in verse five. What triggered the prophecy? Then you shall flee through my mountain valley, for the mountain valley shall reach to Azal. Yes, you shall flee as you fled, as you fled from the earthquake in the days of Uzziah, king of Judah. See, a lot of people know about the earthquake, except us, because we're so far from that. But the Bible people are conscious of that great major earthquake in Uzziah, and that was a timeline everyone looked forward to or marked things uh, of when things happen. There is coming, and this year is a year of great shakings and earthquakes. The earthquakes are caused by two major factors. Uh, this will still be the fifth point. This is the sub point. Uh, and, uh, two major factors. A is, 5A is natural factors of the earth. They have been groaning since Romans chapter 8. The earth is groaning. Uh, let's look at Romans chapter 8 very quickly. And I'm going to give all these points out. So at least I can say that we have covered this ground. Romans chapter 8. And it says something about the manifestations of the sons of God. Because this year, the manifestations of the sons of God will become more visible. Wouldn't it become more visible when this year the transfiguration happened and this year the arms and legs grow and this year miracle happened where a person with a heart pacer, a heart pacer disappear or a person with a confirmed blind eyes suddenly got healing? Wouldn't it be uh, significant? It began to be like a light bulb that suddenly shine. This is the year. But together with the right, what I call the rise of the manifestations of the sons of God, which is uh, taking place this year in this outpouring. <coughs> it says here that, uh, let's look at this exact verse, verse 19. 
For the earnest expectation, the creation eagerly waits for the revealing of the sons of God, or the manifestation of the sons of God. This year, the sons of God grow up. The sons of God grow up. This is the year where the Lord says, this is good. Supposed to be last year, our growth was delayed. Um, so, this year, as the manifestation of the sons of God began, notice he talked about creation in verse 20. For the creation was subjected to futility, not willingly, but because of him who subjected it. Because the creation itself also will be delivered from the bondage of corruption to the glorious liberty of the children of God. For we know that the whole creation groans and labor with birth pangs. So there's a reaction. Everything that you see that is visible is affected by the things that are invisible. Even on a planetary scale. Earthquakes. And uh, then you all remember, I'm not going to uh, turn to those verses, most of you know very well. First Kings 19. Remember that Elijah was called to Mount Horeb. Then there's a fire, there's a wind, the wind so strong that the rocks uh, were blown, up, blown apart. There was an earthquake. Correct? First Kings 19. What caused the earthquake? The presence of God has a side effect. When this outpouring happened this year, and the presence of God increased, the earth will shake. Not just natural shaking. It has a side effect. I prove it to you from the Bible. That in the Bible, spiritual presence of God can shake even the earth. Remember, signs on the earth below. Signs in the sky above. And now. Uh, and we also have when Jesus Christ was um, risen from the day or at the time when uh, Jesus was on the cross. And uh, in Matthew 27, verse 34, it says, So when the centurion and those who were with him were guarding Jesus, saw the earthquake. Jesus on the cross. What caused the earthquake? It was not a natural earthquake. It was a spiritual transaction taking place. Jesus died on the cross for our sins. Tremendous cosmic universal forces are at work. Side effects should affect the earth. The earth is just a tiny little dot affected by the cosmic events of universal salvation. On our Lord Jesus Christ. And um, then of course, when Jesus rose from the dead, chapter 28, verse 2, and behold, there was a great earthquake again. And an angel of the Lord descended from heaven. I tell you, the day Jesus died on the cross, those three days, the Lord shaking the earthquake. <laughs> Spiritually caused. You all remember, of course, Acts chapter 16. Paul and Silas in prison, singing. And then, there was an earthquake. So there are earthquakes. And this year, because of what is released on the earth, finally, what is released and received, Remember the Lord says about great shaking uh, in the prophecy I read this morning? There is going to be a literal shaking. Every place. And we will look. Now it's January. We will count the earthquakes from January to December. But as the presence of God increases, it will be extraordinary. Of course, our prayers are that the earthquake won't be in populated centers that innocent people die. But what we want you to know is that in this year, number five, the very earth beneath us was shit. Of course, scientists wouldn't put two and two together uh, and say, you know, how can that earthquake be related to this event? Because uh, it's a spiritual event. And for them, they need a natural explanation. But scientists will observe towards the end of this year as they analyze and look back this year. But this year is a lot of natural phenomena and shaking taking place. And they will wonder why. Because of the outpouring of the Spirit and the manifestation of the sons of God that is taking place. Events, revelations of God and His angels and glory, there is a side effect causing earthquakes. Six event, there are only seven, and, and moving very fast, we don't go into too much details. And uh, 
we look over in the book of Genesis, Genesis, I actually wanted to go to the book of Joshua. Book of Joshua, please. Thank you. Again, Joshua was in a transition. You know, these are transition events. And um, then they went forth and they conquered part of the land of Canaan and their conquest started. But something happened as they began to conquer the land of Canaan. And the people, they were conquered. First, there was um, there's, uh, Jericho. And uh, then after they started Jericho, and then of course they go on, they lost some battles in AI. Then they got themselves right with God because of the sin of Achan. When, when it was all that wave, they continued to the victory. But uh, as they renew the covenant after the victory of AI, and uh, then they make some mistakes in the treaty with the Gibeonites, and uh, then he begins to fight against all the kings that were before him. But what happened? Uh, as they began to be victorious in a fight against all these people that were before them, you notice um, that uh, as the people knew about them, says in chapter 10 of Joshua, chapter 10, in verse 1, it came to pass when Adonai Zedek, king of Jerusalem, heard how Joshua had taken Ai and had utterly destroyed it as he had done to Jericho and his king. So he had done to Ai and his king, and how the inhabitants of Gibeon had made peace with Israel and were among them. That they feared greatly because Gibeon was a great city, like one of the royal cities, because it was greater than Ai, and all his men were mighty. Therefore, Adonai Zedek, king of Jerusalem, sent to Hoham, king of Hebron, Piram, king of Jamuf, Japhia, king of Lachish, and Dibi, king of Eglon. They formed a pact to go against Joshua. We have talked about what is happening in US, what happened in Canada, and uh, then we talked about what happened in China and Russia this morning. Let's talk about the Middle East. The Middle East is going to be gathered together in two different groups in preparation for what is to happen in the war years. The war years take place from 2027 to 2034. But uh, between 2027, when the war years started, to 2029, just before the great tsunami and earthquake that hit the whole, uh, whole planet, literally, and uh, Singapore is gone. Uh, and we um, said that some people don't believe, you know. And uh, well, we wait and see, you know. Uh, you might be uh, very good at that. You can ask your question answer later. <laughs> and uh, <clears throat> it's 2029. Now, between 2027 to 2029, two nuclear missiles were launched. One is launched by, it started with Iran. Iran launched one against uh, Saudi Arabia. And there was an immediate response back to Tehran. And only two were launched. At that time when we spoke about this happening, it's not a nuclear warfare, just two missiles. But when those things take place, uh, we spoke about this. You can trace our records and read and audio and also online. We spoke about this two, three years ago before Iran ever get into this nuclear thing and they will have nuclear, nuclear uh, power. And, why, and the question you ask is, why do these two countries fight each other? Because they are in two different camps, Sunnis versus Shua, Shiites. Mm -hmm. Now, the Antichrist will be the one person who will actually unite them. Because we're going to model it. Oh, that guy was very clever to talk. Uh, that's him. And that's why the world would think he's a man of peace. But he's a false, a false fallen angel, the pretense of God. And because he'd bring he would be a man of peace at first. And then that is far up the road. But what's happening is 
now 2016, interest that uh, uh, say that's that far up the road. Now what is going to happen in the Middle East, because this is year transition, and you already seen signs of it, the Middle East will be divided into two blocks, like this group. And they will be encamped, and it will be very clear where each country will be. But people are wondering, where are the leaders? There will only be two leaders. These are all predictions we're giving. There will only be two leaders. Saudi Arabia and Iran. Watch them over these next years. Because this year is the year's transition, they will rise up as obvious leaders. And all countries will either have to come, all countries in the Middle East, all countries except Israel, will have to come into either camp. There will be no neutral. They're either that camp or that camp. And because this is here a transition, the plan line is being drawn. Transition here is where the line is drawn. You're either here or there. Turkey will try to rise as a nation to be a leader, but their time is not right yet. And like China and Russia, who will be mowed down by the angels I talked about, Daniel, or the angels pushing them, keeping them down. Uh, and, uh, so the same will happen. But there will be something like, it will be an earthquake on the western side that will shake them up. Things will happen that will prevent them from rising forth. So that the only two powers allowed between now and 2027 are these two. Because the time of Turkey belongs to after the tsunami, just like China and Russia. So, prophecy, we cover US, this, and Middle East, and uh, last part, in uh, seven point, we want to look at is the book of Acts chapter 12. Acts chapter 12. This is the final part, and then you can ask your questions. Acts chapter 12. In Acts chapter 12, we see Herod and uh, in verse 21 and 23, 23. So on a set day, Herod arrayed in royal apparel, sat on his throne, and gave on an oration to them. And as he gave this oration to them, the people shouted in verse 22, The voice of a God and not of a man. Then immediately an angel of the law. And may I remind you, this is New Testament. You are reading the New Testament in the time when the gospel has already been preached. But God still does these things in the New Testament. This is not Old Testament. Immediately an angel of the Lord struck him because he did not give glory to God. He was eaten by worms and died. But the word of God grew and multiply. Why was Herod targeted? Because this is the seventh part that the Lord said. Besides the great shaking that I covered in uh, six point, six point, three point, three point, six point was the, the two camps. So the, the fifth point, the great shaking. This seven point is what I call uh, in visions we see Archangel Uriel going forth with all his other archangels, slaughtering all the wolves and the dogs. Who are the wolves and the dogs? In the book of Acts chapter 20, Paul, as he says his goodbye to the church of Ephesus, all the elders gather there in a place called Miletus, and as he says his goodbye to them, he says these words, When I'm gone, ravenous wolves will come in. And these wolves are just wanting to eat up the sheep and destroy them. In other words, those who are attacking the sheep. Remember the other vision we had. When the dogs are allowed to fester and grow, they will turn to wolves. When the wolves gather in great number, the snakes will come. Snakes represent fallen angels. Wolf represent demonic powers. Dogs represent religious people. 
In the book of Galatians, Paul called religious people, the Judaizers, beware of dogs. Uh, then Paul calls wolves, false prophets are called wolves. And they were coming under pretense to be God. In fact, you know the false prophet that will work along with the Antichrist? Uh, the Antichrist was born last year. The false prophet was born in 2004. The false prophet will actually be a minister of the church. I'm going to say minister of God. <laughs> no, that's our term. He will be actually a Christian minister. He will come in the guise of a Christian minister. So people will think, wow, this is a great prophet of God. And he got certain signs and wonders also. He will rise as a false prophet within the church. You think that he'll be a false prophet, you know, with some other religion? No, they choose Christianity. So he might even be attending pastor's conference. A prophetic conference. Who knows, might conduct some seminars there. These are the wolves. They are actually false. They are wolves. Uh, no. Demonic activities, of course, with the false prophet, even fallen angels. But then, when the snakes come, the fallen angels have entrenched themselves inside. What will happen this year as we pray and in this outpouring of in Jerusalem glory? Every single dog and wolf will be killed. Now, not everyone, again, may I remind you this morning's service? Not everyone who dies is the wolf and the dog. So they say, Wow, the man of God died, you know. Pastor said they say wolves and dogs all got slaughtered. He must have been a wolf. <laughs> I didn't say that. You know, I remember I said some people time to go home. Uh, and, uh, but the Lord is doing this for us this year. In preparation for the revival as we go forth. And we allow the transfiguration to take place. And as we go forth to certain places. Once we start the church in Washington in February, sometime after that, and as we went to do some of the things, uh, Ara and I will go to about five places to be altered, only both him and I. And after we do it, you will hear of earthquakes happening. Those are different types of earthquakes. Those are earthquakes caused from the spiritual realm uh, because of what we release. And uh, so some of those things, you hear, oh, earthquake there, you know. Oh, the pastor go there. <laughs> no, doesn't mean doesn't mean that every place we land earthquake so terrible, <laughs> so destructive. No, who wants every you know, go to supermarket earthquake and supermarket speak too. No, you don't want that. I'm talking about you know we are praying that no humans will be and all innocent lives will be lost, but sort of the earth is responding. The earth is responding. He wants to grow and respond to the manifestation of sons of God. Uh, and, uh, so that's why I cover that as an event. And uh, so in chapter 7, all the wolves and the dogs will be slaughtered on our behalf. Uh, there will be such a great slaughter that literally from the spiritual realm or natural realm, it will be like a pile of carcasses. They say, wow, so many deaths, so many at one time. And you will know it's not by accident. If one random person die here, one random person die here, you can say, oh, coincidence. But when a group of them die, you know there's no coincidence. Because the angels actually sweep right through. Just like the ten plague of Moses, all the firstborn died, including the animals. That's no coincidence. When in a time of Job, in one day, he lost everything, including his children. That was no coincidence. You know, there's something suspicious going on here. Uh, you are going to see the same thing. That in one shot, over this year, things that you cannot explain by coincidence, and I pray that the body of Christ wakes up when they hear this word, that the shaking has begun. And it's only going to get worse for one reason. God is dividing the foolish virgins from the wise virgins. And you have to choose which side your heart. I did not say and I will never say that we are, we are the only true church. That is pride. 
There is wrong and there is an error. There are many good people in every church. There are, I believe, many good ministers of God out there. They might not have the voices. They might, uh, I remember, this year is the year God gave them a voice. This is the year God will remove those who stop their voices and God will give them a voice. And this is the year of transition. God will remove every hindrance and allow the five wise virgin to rise. Uh, because they have the oil. And that oil that they have is being supplied this year. What's the difference between five foolish and five wise? The oil. Why did the five foolish burn out? No oil. The oil represents the Holy Spirit. And it's this year that the oil is being poured out. And that will differentiate the wise virgin from the foolish virgin. Collect your oil on your way out. <laughs> I'll say I need like, no. Uh, in every place where you're hungry for God, the outpouring is coming upon you so that you don't have to keep singing, give me all in my land, give me burning, burning, burning. And uh, no, that all is not to burn, that all is to spare. And you're really burning well. And so, uh, that's the seventh thing that we want to touch on. I will write more in details in some ways about the slaughter, the wolves and the dogs and those things that take place. But that's basically it. Now we open for question and answer. Yes, Eddie, are you organizing that? From the floor first, before the internet people start coming in. Colleen already got a question coming. I could see it over here. Uh, let's do that and then come to you. Yes. Wait, right, Colleen, you're giving him the first question. Okay. Yes, Ching Wei. Uh, we can't hear you. The mic is not working. Thank you. Ah, yes, okay, okay now. Okay. Master, the, the two queens are uh, white. What in the spirit world, what, what, are, what are these people? Why are they uh, chosen to, to be a marker? Two queens. The two queens. Oh, the two queens. Okay. Okay. Spiritual oh, they're not martyrs. Like a uh, martyrs. Martyrs. Oh, martyrs. Okay. <laughs> Thank you very much. Didn't we say it was a queen of Netherlands and a queen of England? Did we say that in a prophecy? It's all online. Uh, and so, uh, it, it's that. These two nations are somehow important in the dispensation of God. Uh, remember when they are removed, if they are really born again, their heart and all that is, you know, if they are safe, they are safe. Uh, it's just that they are calendars. They are calendars. That's all we know. UK is an important thing, so is Netherlands. Master, I was actually pondering on this uh, Psalm 82. Uh, uh, this is uh, to quite a number of uh, theologians. So, uh, it says here in Psalm 82 verse 2. Uh, Psalms 82 oh, verse, one, two. Verse, verse 1. one. Okay. God stands in the congregation of the mighty. He judges among the gods. And then when we read uh, verse 6. I said, you are gods, and all of you are children of the Most High. But you shall die like men, and fall like one of the princes. Arise, O God, judge the earth, for you shall be carried for ashes. So, it seems that uh, when I read various uh, opinions uh, about this, Psalm 82, uh, some are saying that uh, these uh, gods, uh, which is the word Elohim, Elohim uh, is yeah. referring to... Uh, then, and then uh, a few people said it refers to angels, and I was reading it, I felt it is referring to the judgment of angels could be eschatological time, like now. And then this morning as you were uh, preaching then, it felt like this is for now, where uh, both 
the princes of the air will be struck down like men, and the, the kings who are under this princes of the air would also be struck down. So um, master your own. Okay. Uh, when he say he judges among the gods, uh, he judges firstly the general interpretation first. Traditional general interpretation is that God was judging idolatry. That's a general interpretation for the most basic uh, conservative Christian. And uh, then there's a second level interpretation where he is the judge among the Elohim. I've been translating the Bible from Hebrew. The word Elohim is used also of judges, of human beings who stand in the place of judges. The word Elohim has also been used uh, of the word Lord uh, when he refer to the angels. And uh, so it can refer to God uh, standing and judging uh, among the angels and among men. So that's a very liberal uh, approach. I think all three approaches are uh, applicable. Can you apply to what we are hearing now? Pardon? Can you apply to what we are seeing now that uh, the prince of the air will be judged? You know, like, uh, ah, not judging the prince of the air on the fallen saw, angels? Yeah, we saw Daniel, uh, uh, Daniel's example. Yes, uh, that's possible. Except that some of these judgment has uh, taken place in the spiritual world. And they are not so much um, they're not so much uh, visible to human eyes. And um, so I would not use this words for judging of angels, because angels have been judged long ago uh, in an angelic rebellion, which took place when one third of them fell. That was the first judgment. The second level judgment was the angels that took the authority from Adam on the earth which was dealt with when Jesus Christ rose from the dead, died on the cross and rose from the dead, and that was sealed and died. And uh, what we have done in these end times was to proclaim the decree of the Ancient of Days and we release what was originally released in Christ. Everything that we claim was based on the works of Christ. And uh, it was not really a fresh judgment, it was an application of a decree that was already given, but never implemented and now we implement it and so I would hesitate to interpret as a fresh judgment because by allowing a fresh judgment it automatically means that the previous judgment was not good enough and that would uh, demean and lower the work of Christ and so to keep the work of Christ where it is uh, everything is a subset of the work of Christ rather than a fresh judgment and uh, so that's how I would uh, see it in this uh, psalm that uh, it's just God judging uh, among the wicked and the idolatry and uh, among the false gods that are there now false gods interestingly also use the word Elohim Except the adjective tells you that it's a false god. The same way that the Greek word for god is theos. And uh, when it's talk about false god, it also uses the word theos. So the word theos is what I call generic neutral. Uh, just because theos doesn't mean it's a good, good god, you have to actually uh, look at the context to know it's referring to a good god. Because when, when Paul says Satan is the god of this world, he uses the word theos. Which is the word we use to, in Greek to god. And uh, that is, uh, the, the language itself is generic and neutral. So the context of it tells us whether it's a true and living God or a false God. So the same we use says in Elohim. I will look at it that way. Yes? Okay, now you need the mic so the people online can hear you. Pastor, if you look at 6 and 7 together, you still... Uh, Jesus quoted that, right? Ye are gods. Yeah. So it's like, okay, the first person who wrote the psalm, they are actually believers. Exactly. It's a man. They are talking about man, right? Yes. As, as man, you die. And as mm. man, yeah. so because gods don't die. Uh, yeah. As man, they are man. So perhaps they are destroying the person who wrote the psalm. 
That's a possibility. And Jesus has used the word in verse 6 very positively, saying, you know, those who walk with God are children of God, function like God. Uh, so he uses it of man who are God-like. Uh, so that can be usage. Yeah. I still have a question here. Yes, um, In the, I think it was last weekend, you uh, in Sydney and you were sharing about uh, uh, Ariel's vision uh, and how because his vision was interrupted. That was why oh, yeah. he missed out on the September 20th. He didn't know the significance. So, um, when I heard about it, I, I was a little, uh, you know, I was thinking about it. If he knew that, you know, his vision was interrupted, could he have asked, you know, for the missing parts? Or what could he have done? Okay. So, Binla is referring to how uh, I was sharing about the link between the transfiguration, the signs and wonders and the miracles, that when some of the downloads were happening, there was interruption, 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 so that we cannot link uh, 2 plus 2 together. Uh, and uh, So she's saying that in those interruptions, could we have prayed and uh, got those messages? I believe we could have. I believe we could have. We keep pushing in and praying, spending more time with God. Yeah. Yes. Also, I have questions. Yeah. So online. Mine's on. Okay. Yeah. Okay. You can go online and then ask them. It's both you and online. <laughs> <laughs> okay. With some of them are doing right now with the internet. Okay. Yeah. And they, they, in the book of Revelation, there are four creatures. They mentioned about their their lot of loss of eyes outside, uh, which is I know that their movement is very fast. That's why they look like outside. But they also Lots of eyes within themselves. What does that mean? Within themselves, we also got. Can you give me the exact words? Where the word within is found? Okay. Because you're going to look at the actual uh, preposition. So, what well, Eddie is looking at that, any other questions coming in? Yes. Other prediction, correct? Uh, then you will see whether this word from the Lord is correct. Yeah. Or, or would it be? Because the primaries is only like, uh, like first, first of February, the Democrat primary vote right. right? yeah. is first of February. And there's no young Democrat in that list. <laughs> <laughs> so it will be that delay somehow. <laughs> okay. Uh, we believe and we have seen that it's actually a man. It's definitely not lady. Lady, then it's obviously, you know, uh, the logical collision Hillary Clinton. But for some reason, she dropped out. Which this year, we're giving you news before the news. And uh, something will happen that Ariel and I have discussed, some of our downloads, uh, and, uh, that will cause her to pull out. And the download was this, which I can share since it's question and answer. Um, that is that she was put in a situation where if she don't withdraw, uh, she might face sentences and all these or some things that have occurred or taken place. It has to do with email stuff too. And another possibility is that uh, she, she could have won, but she was forced to resign and then the, the Interesting, interesting theory. Interesting theory. I say, not too bad. Okay. Thank you for trying to fulfill the prophecy. <laughs> <laughs> or, or you could even say that that young man is her vice president. Yeah. There's something happened to her that the young man took over. Correct? Possible? But the prophecy was not delivered like that. It was delivered that this young man won because he was like John F. Kennedy. And people were attracted to him because he talked, speak, and functioned like John F. Kennedy. 
That's it. So, we don't have many months to go, right? Interesting to watch. <laughs> Interesting to watch. Yeah, you're ready now. Yes. Yeah. Revelation 4. Revelation chapter 4, verse 8. The four living creatures, each having six wings, were full of eyes around, which is a Greek word, kuklotan. Uh, okay, forming a circle. And within, isotan. Oh, I forgot about the Bible I used to give to you all. Eh? After so many weeks in uh, uh, um, Australia, I forgot that you could see my Bible if I turn it on. Okay, no one reminded me. Uh, okay, what was... Mm. Okay. Strange, I cannot find it anymore. It disappeared while I was in Australia. I'm going to get TL's help after this. Okay. Can't find it anymore. Is it still here? It's, it's not there. Usually I pull it up, it's there. It's disappeared. Maybe it needs to be updated. Mirroring. Uh, when I push it up, it should appear, right? Then I push it down again. Okay, I like it. <laughs> okay. The thing disappeared. Yeah, so that you can see the Hebrew words when I punch it up. Okay, so while the Bible has disappeared then we go back to traditional Bible. Thank you for traditional Bible. Uh, okay, Revelation chapter 4. And Revelation 4, okay, was it? The four living creatures, each having six wings, were full of eyes around and within, and they did not rest day or night. Oh yeah, I was going to punch the, Hebrew, the, the Greek word for them to see the actual Greek word. And, uh, and uh, we wait till we get the actual Greek word to punch it up there. All right. So, uh, we're getting that. Okay. Online. And this is the great work we want, want you to see. Okay, while we're waiting for that to come, let's handle the other questions that are coming online. Okay, this one, is it a C or G? So I just pronounce it as I think it is. Kina, a place in India, has severe... Chennai. 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 The I is missing. So, Chennai, a place in India, has severe blood. Severe blood? Blood. Oh, but B L O O D. Okay, severe blood. Okay. Oh, severe flood. What is the spiritual significance? Uh, oh, that's it. That's the question. Okay. Um, there is one observation that you can see from the Bible from the first time that Cain died. First time that Cain died. Now, these two occasions in the Bible link some interesting things. In the book of Genesis, oh, I got my Bible connected to the Wi Fi. I am not connected to the Wi Fi. Oh, you, I need the Wi Fi. Of course. Am I connected now? Yeah. Ah, I'm online. Okay. So, let's do this Chennai question. Then we come back to the living creature question. And uh, so, let's go to the book of Genesis. Uh, oh, I forgot to make it big for you guys. Uh, okay. Oh, big was not that style. Okay, big was through here. Okay, okay it's big enough. So, Genesis, answering the Chennai question now. And, um, Cain was there. Now notice something happened in the time after Abel was killed by Cain. It says here, So now you are cursed from the earth, which has opened its mouth to receive your brother's blood. 
This is the first murder case in the Bible. No need Sherlock Holmes. Not many people can say, who is the guilty one? Who, do, who did it? Right? Not, not many candidates. <laughs> and so he says, uh, we are open to receive your brother's blood from your hand. When you till the ground, it shall no longer yield its strength. Notice that. It shall no longer yield its strength. Then, when you look at the time of King David, and you check under famine, and we know that King David's life is basically 2 Samuel and 1 uh, uh, Chronicles. And that's in chapter 21, verse 1. Now there was a famine in the days of David. For three years, three long years, the weather changed. Year after year, then they asked the Lord, Why? Same like you're asking, Why? But you're not asking about famine, flood, earthquake, tornadoes, uh, all these things. Why? So today, once and for all, answer all your future wives. <laughs> then we asked and said, The Lord said, Because of Saul and his bloodthirsty heart. Because he killed the Gibeonites. Remember the Gibeonites had a treaty with Israel? And said, don't slay us, we will be your servant. Signed by Joshua and the elders. And that treaty was violated by somebody who doesn't know about the treaty. But other people who don't know about the treaty suffer the consequences of somebody who don't know about the treaty. Because by somebody who don't know about the treaty, suffering because nobody knows what the treaty so long ago but everything is recorded in heaven there is a cause and effect to everything except we humans live such short lives we cannot link it when it's over hundreds of years but God links it also remember Deuteronomy chapter 28 what did God say can cause weather conditions to change if Israel sin, go into idolatry, disobey God's commandment, the heavens will be as brass. There will be no more rain. They will suffer famine. The Bible links weather changes to righteousness. When the people are righteous, the land is blessed. People are unrighteous and sinful, the land is cursed. Even though the sinful move into good area, after some time the good area will become cursed. You only see the temporary effects of the goodness. Uh, but the sad thing is the earth is quite big and they move from one place to another and they eat up all the resources. Uh, each time it's affected. So that's your answer. See what? What's the answer? Okay. Somewhere, someplace, sometime, nobody knows. Blood was shed. Sin occur. Things that displease the Lord. And the Lord has to allow and disallow based on the accumulation of evil. When evil has to accumulate, it must burst forth. Like a boil on your skin. It must burst, burst forth. When you're eating all the junk food, everyday junk food, junk food, junk food, junk food, then we see how many pimples you can have. <laughs> uh, olive food, olive food, fried food. All right. Sure, it has a side effect, correct? 100% side effect is only when and you want it faster then feed it more uh, sure something will burst out because of the toxic you accumulate so the same thing on the planet Earth that answers the Chennai question we're going to answer the living creature question which goes back to Revelation chapter 4 yes verse 8 and I wanted you to see this um Greek word, the word within. Around is very obvious, is circle. Asotem. Asotem from inside, used as from inside, within, from within, inner part, from within, that which is within, inside the soul, full definition. Uh, not good enough. We want a root word that is there. Inner space which is behind the veil. Okay, that's a possibility. Not good enough. Any other resources? Ok. 
okay, let's look at the analytical grid like second. At work or place from the outside, from the inside to the outside of the inner nature. Okay. It says that this living creature were full of eyes within and around. That means it's like it's moving from inside and outside. So what's happening? Let me illustrate. They are moving in circles and they're also moving inward to outward. Okay, let me explain. Um, when this these uh, manifestation of the four living creatures are four different gears. The first gear is the face of a man. As the energy increase, this face of the man will become the face of an ox. As the energy increase, the face of the ox becomes the face of a lion. And that is the third gear. Then as more energy is increased and pumped into them, then it becomes the face of the eagle. For them to come back to the face of the man, it again has to shift gear. But they cannot jump from fourth gear to first gear, like our cars. They have to go from fourth gear to third gear to second gear and back to first gear. So within them, their eyes, remember, there are, they are, they are four sets of eyes. Eyes of a man, eyes of an ox, eyes of a lion, and eyes of an eagle. So within them is like that. So the eyes are changing. We didn't have to no, no, because they're changing like that. But at the same time, because of the energy that they have, there is also a circular motion. So you're seeing two movement. There is this movement followed by this movement. So it looks like eyes around and eyes inside and outside because of the due movement. So it's like a circle like that. But what is going this way is turning at the same time. So that's causing the phenomena. Let's observe. Uh, let's finish this internet one since I got this power here. Second question. Since we are in prosperity years, we can start preparing ourselves in investment. What is your advice for those not involved in business? Example, those in full-time ministry. Don't get involved in business. <laughs> Let others do the business. Because if you are called to full time, you don't have time to spare. To make anything succeed, you must invest time. Which is why I don't believe that you can be good in doing one job, like the Lord's work, and try to do business at the same time. You can invest and let somebody do it, somebody you trust, or whatever, but if you yourself are involved, it requires time and effort. And so if you're called to full time, make a clear vision. Invest in others, but your life belongs to God. You have to invest your life in what did Peter do? Um, Peter was a top businessman before that, correct? He was a shareholder in a business with James John and Peter and Andrew. Remember, the four of them were partners in fishing before they met Jesus. After they met Jesus, they left everything. The only time he almost go back was after Jesus was crucified. He said, let's go fishing. But once Jesus met him in the Gospel of John and told him, asked him three questions whether he loved him, he played, uh, playing on the Greek words agape and phileo, and uh, when he confessed his love back to God, he said, I finally owe you. Then in the end, he never went back. What was his statement in Acts chapter 6? We are helping the widow so much, we don't have time. We want to give ourselves to prayer and the word. Did he include business there? No. See, there was one time it was fashionable for a lot of pastors to go into business. Even if you have the acumen for it, the ability for it, doesn't mean you should. Correct? Otherwise, you'll be doing a thousand things. We only got 24 hours. You serve God better in the ministry by serving in the Word and prayer. But a lot of them go in because all they want is more money. 
But that's your only motivation, you just don't know Matthew 6.33. Uh, so, full-time people don't get involved in business. They leave business to those who have a special call. That God anoint them to be in that area of business. Uh, find someone you could trust, invest your money there. Uh, God doesn't forbid you from investment, but He forbid you, you are called full-time, from being involved. Because it takes time. And uh, so I guess the question is about full time ministry. So that should be it. My pastor, there's yes. uh, questions that have been typed on the screen behind you. On the screen. The questions are ready. We put them on the screen. Oh, you put them. Oh, so shall we go in that order? Yeah. Okay. Oh, very good. Now you guys are getting the more organized. Hey, what about the top one, number four, we didn't answer? Is there some organs and tissues that we're asking about? Let's start from number one. Oh, let's start from number one. Thank you very much. Okay. But now you're all very organized. <laughs> Let me have my pointer. Okay. Hope my pointer works. You know there's a scientific way in which you can convert a laser thing to something that actually generates heat. And you know that? So one day I might convert it as a toy. To <laughs> okay, anyway. Any prophecies, visions for the African continent in 2016? Yes. Um, Sam and Lois. Uh, Sam is among the 4 plus 4 and Lois is among the 12. Uh, I've instructed them. And Lois, you just wrote to me recently and asked for permission to gather to build altars. I made this statement. Because the false prophet is based in suffering for Africa somewhere, in some village somewhere, that um, there is an accumulation of evil. The, the Satan, remember, he was cast out from Pergamos, and then he tried to base it in Korea. He was also pushed back. And somebody asked me, where is Satan's throne now? So I said, Africa. Then suddenly, Africa said, ah, my house. Ah. <laughs> so, and, uh, so it's towards the area of a uh, 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 chat area that, uh, around that, that, that country area, mountainous area. Remember, God gave you a vision at Sam. And, um, and I've told them, we don't have enough altar buildings in Africa. And uh, we need them to do it in order to take a stand and push back what they are crossing the boundaries. Uh, because... Uh, because if we disobey, see, Satan feeds on our disobedience. When we disobey, then they can cross boundaries. When we obey, they have to remain in the boundaries. And so there is a call and commission for altar buildings in Africa, which I really are planning with Sam. Uh, some people are going and those interested and, and all that. Uh, with Lois, once they build altars in Africa, and release the presence of God. Uh, I have been asked about three people, uh, about three prominent ministers by name. I've been asked throughout these two, three years. All three are false prophets. But normal Christianity is accepting that. When they ask me to name them, I look at it, pray, and the Lord say, this is another false one. There's a lot of them. And their congregation is huge. Tens of thousands, thirties of thousands, thirty thousand or something like that. And it's, it's uh, something that has to be addressed. Uh, once the altar buildings are completed this year, I think uh, Sam and Lois are uh, this year, right? Once it is done, there will be a few earthquakes that happen there because this year is a different year. It's, it's nice year for shaking the earth. Okay. And uh, it's all you know, nicely strategic place. Then there will be a bit of shaking. Then there will rise the second generation. The first generation in Africa is not that good. I've seen in the spirit not many good ones. There are a few good ones. Uh, I met some of them in South Africa and all that. But more of them are the second generation. There's a whole group of second generation that's going to rise. And they are the ones that are going to fulfill the prophecy. Remember, the old ones all die out. And a lot of them, are, a lot of some of these false prophets, they're gonna die. When when you when you finish building the altar, 
uh, angel. Like when we finished building the altar in uh, USA, Aruel saw a vision of uh, Aruel saw a vision of Uriel going forth with a with a sword. The same thing will take place in Africa, and all these people will be cut down. So that is going to take place in Africa. When Satan steals the word, this probably reference to Mark chapter four. What does he do with the seed? Does he dissipate? <laughs> Or is it some sort of store, or you're talking about storehouse or word seed useless to him, lost to the original person? Okay, this is what Satan deal do to a stolen seed. He pervert and change it. He takes the energy that is there, twisted it, its DNA, into a bit more dark, and then it becomes something else. Uh, now, if I can illustrate. Okay, since the person is dead. Elvis Presley could have been a good gospel singer and remain a good Christian. But the world attracted him and he in the end used his voice for the other side, although he got some good, nice Christian hymns. So his gift came from God. He's like a seed. Satan stole him and used him to do the sign. So that's what Satan do when he steals something. He pervert it to promote himself. He twists the word and take the energy for himself to, to propagate it. Uh, you give prophecy concerning Asia last year, you mentioned what oh, happened in China, you mentioned about this is the money, right? It should be Y U A N. U one. But didn't elaborate. Can you tell us what will happen to the U one? It will continue to be shaking. Both the, the ruble and the yuan will be shaken. There will only be two strong currencies plus one. So it's, why is that? US dollar, euro. And the, the plus one is any countries that depend on these two. Uh, Singapore currency is always linked to USA. So you will be dragged up. But the little rain got poor, so then they go very high. Australian currency is linked to China. We are. <laughs> okay. Every time something happens in China, our currency goes down. And so, so it depends on which, which, where the link of which country. But the two currencies to watch is US dollar and uh, Euro dollar. And they will be competing very strongly. Uh, we will tell you later on, down the road, we will tell you, time to get out. Right. So that one we will tell you. But for the moment, it's, we're talking about 2016. So the yuan will also be affected because of the angels pushing China down. Not allowed to rise. Every time the rise rise, like boom, something happened, tire burst or something. So it will keep happening. I think you wonder, why in the world is happening? See, the angels are watching each country to make sure they only rise at the proper time, just like they did in the book of Daniel. So the kings want to come up and then they push them down. Uh, so that's exactly what... It, so the reason why I use the Bible to talk about prophecy, so you can see the spiritual scene behind the scene of the natural. Okay, most people's prophecy, they only tell you, you know, they predict, and some of the predictions are also wrong. And they only predict, so we all say, wow, we're clever to predict, huh? Yeah, yeah, so who will to be? You know, you want to be like a false prophet or like somebody that fortune telling or something, we don't want to be that. Every prophecy must have a message. Every word must benefit us in our Christian group. Otherwise, there's no value for that. Uh, it's for us to understand what's happening behind the spirit that is a side effect on the planet Earth right now. So that we're aware of what's happening. And so, we talk about what the angels are doing behind and the side effect that will take place. Uh, unfortunately, China and Russia are not allowed to rise until 2027. But they will win the war against Europe. They will win the war. There will be a war between Russia, Germany. Germany will lead with UK and France against uh, Russia. And Russia will win that one. From then, they become very strong. They are allowed to be strong. Which means, watch China, watch Russia this year. Something is about to happen to Putin. Early this year, this, today is a tank. You need 10 days in the DC. You see so many things happen in China. Watch and see. More things are going to happen in Russia. And uh, uh, 
that is going to come out in the news. Uh, because, how do we know that? Because we see the angels working. So we're telling you, okay, this is happening, this is going to happen soon. And this is how we predict. We don't, we don't predict because of, of just natural. Sometimes the Lord just shows natural. But our inquiry is, tell us, Lord, what's happening behind the scene. And that's what's happening behind the scene. And the reason behind the scene. And so that's, so the yuan definitely be affected. And uh, when the word became flesh or when angels came as flesh, can we say the spiritual, oh, that's where I saw the organs part. It says suddenly, <laughs> okay. can we say the spiritual organs of the logo? Is this logo? Logos. 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 Okay. Of the logos or angels or something get biological organs? <laughs> what does God left hand symbolize? When, this is two questions in one. Okay. When the word became flesh or when angels came as flesh, let me explain. There is only one time when the word became flesh, and that is John chapter 1, verse 14. Only Jesus was the word became flesh. Proverbs chapter 3 and Hebrews chapter 4 verse tells us that the word can become flesh in us because of Jesus' DNA. It needs what I call a catalyst. You all know what catalyst is. If you're in welding, you notice that two metals cannot join. No matter how much heat you put, you put, put a catalyst in between that one joint bone metal. We need the DNA of Jesus. Only the DNA of Jesus can convert spiritual things into this world. What we need. And this is Jesus' DNA. Now, in terms of angels come as flesh, you're talking about good angels first. You got the difference between good angels and bad angels. The good angels, one of them is Melchizedek, who we know is a uh, uh, cherubim. He came down and he was Adam's guardian angel. When Adam didn't finish his work, he applied to God permission to finish the last part until he met with Abraham. Then he ascended on high, uh, Melchizedek, who some say is a man, some say, say, but you read carefully, Paul had the revelation say, without father, without mother. Who is without father, without mother? There's nobody. We're not talking about first creation of man. And he's talking about Melchizedek was actually a good angel, a good cherubim, came in the flesh to minister in that way. Now, when he came in the flesh, it was a form of flesh, which is different from ours. So it is more like molecular consistency but not molecular accuracy. You all know this science, don't you? Well, you ask scientific question, I answer it scientifically. Okay. Molecular consistency versus molecular accuracy. That means, you know, God forbid, but for technical reference. If you strip monkeys here that naked or operate and cut him out, you cannot find human organs. Nor will you find genitals. Because it's only in a form. So that is, if even you, sh you can shake hands with him, but it's a molecular consistency. <coughs> One day they're going to create robots that touch and feel like flesh. Molecular consistency. But there's no blood. <coughs> it only feels very real. And you see some of the toys today that they make very real and you can feel it consistency but in its essence is not accurate not a true representation of what really flesh is so the good angels that's the only one that came in the flesh the others that are recorded are hebrews angels come in the guise of uh, a human and they look human and they say be hospitable lest you entertain angels unaware were hebrews they also have the same with Marquisidai. molecular Consistency, but not molecular accuracy. It's not accurate to the molecules. And fallen angels are different. Fallen angels have played and act with the DNA. Remember, I talked about the three fallen angels that were the leaders of the rebellion under uh, Satan uh, in the time of Noah. And they, got, they are in three different ranks. The um, 
highest rank was Apollyon. He's locked up and only released in the book of Revelation. Uh, he's warlike. He's in the top pyramid. Second layer pyramid is um, there was one Asriel and Senyaza. Okay, I just uh, mix up between the two. One is a seducer, one is an alchemist. Uh, the middle rung one is the one that play with DNA. He will take a spirit being something from them, and they take something from the biology of animals, take something from human, and try to add and change. Except that unlike scientists who are playing with DNA today, he play between spiritual DNA and natural DNA, which is a dimension that scientists cannot play with. Uh, so then in the end, when they convert, or about 200 odd fallen angels came and took on human form, it was a one-way conversion. They cannot get back. Once they allow whatever injection of DNA to come into them as fallen angels to become human and have wives, produce babies, giants and all that, once they come in like that, uh, their DNA has been altered. That's why when they produce also giants came up. Uh, it was a one-way trip for them. Because they had their change was permanent. Something was added to them by this fallen angel. And these are the two. Ezreal and Senyaza are now locked up in <coughs> Siberia. Unfortunately, they are released in 2027. The sign for that is the meteorite that will hit Russia. Remember, on our website, we give you the exact sign. And, uh, and uh, there are seven pieces of meteorite. I can tell you that even scientists cannot predict that. So, you can watch whether it's accurate. And they even tell you the year, it will happen in 2027. And you remember, now one or two years ago, the other meteorite that happened uh, in Russia or something sometime? Okay, this one is in the opposite direction from that. And when it happened, it was just a sign, a calendar event. These two are let out. I tell you when these two are let out. You think the world is really bad now. When these two allow after 2027, the world will start turning back to the days of Noah. Worse still. Uh, so, this is how they did it uh, in a biological sense. And I'll answer it in a three part question. What does God left hand mean? And uh, the right hand is a hand of authority. And uh, Remember the, uh, the apostles want to see on the right hand and the left hand? And um, so the left uh, is, uh, is like the hand of uh, love and mercy. So there's a right and there's a left. But uh, since God's mercy is always shown on you know, that, we don't realize that there's His hand. And the right hand is authority, left is there. And uh, remember in a wedding, uh, when we conduct wedding, now this the young ones don't pay attention to that. Uh, in a wedding, when the, the bridegroom march out with the with the bride, which side does the bridegroom stand on? When he takes the bride, does he take it this way? Or takes her this way? Uh, left. Da -da 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 -da, da -da 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 -da, right? Coming up, of course, the bride is alone. Nah. Dum, dum, da -dum, dum, dum, da -dum. Going back. Da -da -da -dum, da -da -da -dum. Okay. Two of them walking up together. Left side or right side? The bride is this side. Do you walk on the right side? Or walk on the left side? Oh, some of you say any side. Just like, want to walk. <laughs> okay. Supposed to be left closer to the heart. But this modern mind, they don't go and teach properly. Okay. You need someone, a teacher will come to analyze every molecule. <laughs> the correct position is the best side. You know how like today, how you eat and everything is a proper manner? That when you eat in US, uh, when they eat now, uh, when they use a knife and fork, when you're in English culture, they, you cut, you take a fork. In US culture is different. After you cut, put down the knife, change the fork from left hand to right hand, and you only eat with your right hand. These are all cultures 
but molecular level, you need to know. But nowadays, all culture don't care anything anymore. And say, oh, I'm English. <laughs> that doesn't look English, that looks like barbarian. <laughs> okay. Uh, no. But there is a certain culture, how you eat, how you cut. And the same way, wedding march and all that. Uh, I actually have a wedding book that I did last time because uh, when your church is big, uh, you almost have a wedding every week or every other week. And of course, thank God you go only a funeral every other month. <laughs> In other words, your membership increased and decreased based on funerals and birth and all those, uh, all those things. But uh, uh, and, uh, can you imagine when you have a big mega church and you have 10,000, 100,000 members, surely you got a wedding every week or every other day. Imagine you got a million members, imagine 6 billion members. And uh, so you might have a full-time pastor just for funeral. God help the pastor that he's not be very sad. <laughs> After five years of funeral services, he might die himself. <laughs> so we must make sure that the funeral pastor is also the wedding pastor. So he get a cheerful event. Cheerful. Raise the top. So in a wedding, left side is the correct side. Because generally some people, their heart is on the right side. But the heart is on the left side. So that's why we march on the left side. Closer to the heart. The left side, love. Right side, <laughs> so. Okay. Oh, uh, yes. Clarification on. Oh, the question came from you, is it? <laughs> okay. Yes. Clarification on your previous uh, answer. Oh, the previous answer. Uh, China or the flesh? No, the one you talk about fallen angels. Oh, okay. That would be this answer number four. Yes. Yeah. So there are two. These fallen angels after they they uh, make the human beings, right? The the Netherlands that come out, they interview too, right? They yes, interview yes, well. correct. All, all spirits are created by God, right? Correct. Now, what about those, uh, the, the children the children of these uh, Netherlands? Uh, the spirits, they come from God too? Oh, you're talking, humans are slightly different. Humans are slightly different, our human race. But, these angelic things, they play around with spirits, and the spirits of the Nephilim are also a mixture from their spirits come out. Like something separate. You know spirit, you pull something out, it will become another life. So they experiment with that also. That's how the Nephilim are created. So not directly from God. Don't give them enough spirit and they chop it up to make some of these things. That's how they do it. So not directly a spirit sent from God. So in other words, the means they can like go from one being Split up into the they can. And they can merge and become one giant being. Yeah, that's their ability. Okay, are horoscope and astrology real? Okay. Uh, not the modern way. In our modern modern uh, way, it has been perverted and it's all a money making thing. So don't believe that. And uh, that's the first thing. Secondly, the calculation also up. Even if you have to count what style you're born into, if you check the scientific accuracy, they have shifted. And none of the horoscope or astrology have accounted for scientific movement of all the 12 different zodiac signs. It has moved so much that it's no more exact date that you're born. Remember in astrology, you're born one day to one day, your, your Pisces, your Virgo, or your this. Those dates have changed. Scientifically. So you're no longer actually born under those things. They never account for the scientific fact. So first is inaccurate, second, scientifically inaccurate. First is the is mythology, uh, all the abuse of the things. Secondly, it's not scientific anymore. Uh, although they have come up with some science writing trying to show that a person's characteristics linked to when and what is born, that's why I want to make the third statement. We are somehow also affected in our DNA, a slant or angle by the day you're born, where the systems are because of the gravitational, gravitational pull, the weather and the environment, but those are a minute effect which your free will can overcome, still can overcome. But I need to say that there is a scientific basis for how it affects you, just like if you 
uh, if your your great grandparents only eat fish, and your your grandparents eat fish, your father only eat fish, and you only eat fish, surely after four generations got some DNA effect. In the same way, that right? you are affected by some environment, and uh, so there is a percentage, but nothing that your free will cannot choose and overcome. Whereas astrology and horoscope, the worst thing about it is fatalism. Fatalism. It robs you of your free will to choose to become some other person than what the stars try to tell you. And, uh, okay, uh, when the false prophet. Okay. Yes? Can you from the ground first? This okay. Is the oh, but from the ground. <laughs> so that's that? <laughs> from the sky. <laughs> okay. Wow, this guy's handwriting really like printing. <laughs> this is the handwriting. Okay. Hi, Pastor Peter. Greetings to you. I heard many people, including some Christians, saying this. Oh my God! In the beginning of the sentence. Example. Oh my God! This guy is talking nonsense. Uh, he's got responsible for this guy's nonsense talk. Oh my God! This guy is telling a dirty joke. Oh my God! Damn expensive. Oh my God! <laughs> What a lousy, horrible book. I can't have feeling waxed when people shout such words. I understand many people are exp uh, exposed to this. Uh, some local Chinese Christians spout words like touch wood, hang a uh, lucky. What is that? Hang a lucky. Oh, hang a. Okay, yes. Okay, I'm not Chinese. Uh. Hang a uh, lucky. What? <laughs> so, oh, it's supposed to be hang a. Uh. Okay, okay, that's the way to pronounce it. Okay, or Christian using it. Okay, these are what I call swear words. Or subconscious swear, swear words. Some people even use Jesus' name. And all those things. These are called like swear words or exclamation words. And we should learn to eliminate that for our conversation. Because they're like, like expletive. And we just keep saying it. Every idle word is important. I believe in the long run, this taking God's name in vain. Right, so, should be eliminated. Yeah. This one, it will be Isaiah chapter 6. Uh, oh, I'm a man of unclean lips. Okay, this one. Thank you. It is scriptural that powers and authority are from God. However, with most power goes corruption, oppression of mankind against each other. Example, leadership in developing countries. Yes, we've seen that. How far should Christians go in order to challenge people in authority? Because God does care when human rights are violated. What is the fine line not to cross the scripture, yet challenge corrupt leadership? Okay, here you're talking about getting involved in politics and in social uh, development, social works, or social revolution, whatever. Politics, social revolution, or whatever else it is here. Uh, Jesus says, my kingdom is not the kingdom of this world. Jesus also said, the poor you will always have. And I believe that the best way we can challenge this authority is not by direct confrontation, but by praying them out. Without lifting one finger to reach a gun, a sword, or a word, or a uh, uh, the internet or through social media without lifting one finger for that or click of the mouse all you need is a click of your tongue bring in tongue tick, 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 right? <laughs> and it will be do far more than all these social things do not rely on flesh and blood to change flesh and blood rely on the spiritual forces that can change flesh and blood and remove them if necessary that's always my policy, which is why I disagree with pastors going to politics. And it was an in thing. In the past, when Pat Robinson went, started taking the election order, they went to change it! This is our world! God never asked you to change it using natural methods. We have lost so much spiritual power, we don't know how to do any more things except through natural power. We have to go back to spiritual power. That's where our strength is. Like John Knox who said, uh, uh, Queen, Mary the Queen of Scots, he actually, actually said this, 
I am more afraid of the prayers of John Knox than all the armies of England. Think about that. So, why doesn't the arrangement of the tribes of Israel mentioned in Ezekiel 48 not put into consideration? Hmm, good point. I will have a look at that. So, next Sunday, I will have a look. Right. I will see that part. Because it's seven years on that part. It's chapter 48, right? Okay, I have a look. And then next Sunday, I see if it's applicable. Okay. When the false prophet arises to fame, will it be clear immediately to those close to the law, or will he only later become clear what his motives are? Those who know the Lord and can see 100%. But not all who see in the spirit. Most people are affected from the outside. So unfortunately, with uh, some of, some people will be deceived still, because it will look like a sheep, but it's actually a wolf in sheep's skin. In the book of Matthew 16, 19, Jesus gave keys to Peter to buy and lose. Whereas in Matthew 18, 18, no keys but the church can buy and lose. Uh, what is to bind and lose? Those two things are different authority. Peter was given a special authority because he was the delegated authority over the twelve. Jesus appointed. Remember Jesus said, when you are turned, strengthen your brethren. He was Jesus' appointed leader. So he had a different level of authority, even in the spirit, than the others. Matthew 18 is the authority of any believer who has faith. You can pray and reach a level of authority that can influence God. Uh, so they're slightly different. It's an authority of, of agreement. What is the correct pronunciation of God's personal name, Yahweh? Is it Yahweh? It used to be Jehovah, which is very far out. And uh, even the Hebrew people don't know how to pronounce because they were not allowed to pronounce for so many thousand years that everybody forgot how to pronounce. And uh, it's only the in our modern term that we try to pronounce it. It's actually spelled this way, you know, Yahweh. And uh, so uh, uh, when we say Yah, Yah, because we tend to make it smooth, Yahweh. Actually, it's not really Yahweh, but it's easier to pronounce. And uh, so, I originally went, yeah, what kind of thing? So it's very hard. It's not when it was say, I love you, yeah, I love you. Yeah. No, it's very hard to sing the song, Yahweh. So the same like, uh, Jesus' name in the Greek is actually Jesus. Very far from Jesus. Or Jesus. So, uh, but it's fine with God. It's the meaning of the breath that we are speaking that He catches it. So, it's more enunciation that is slightly different. And I would say, no one knows. No one knows of that. That's Hebrew. And uh, is Putin going to be revolver this year? Yes. Since you asked the question. Uh, verse 11. Is Prophet T.B. Joy influenced by a fallen angel? No. But he is a false prophet. Uh, he's not that powerful. Uh, Pastor, I'd like to ask for Nigeria. Early this year, a young prophet told me about download he received where God was saying his glory has been hovering, hovering that altar should be built so his glory can rest. Also, I've always wanted to talk to you about claiming the country for God. Even before the download, I sent an email to Pastor Eruel, but he has not been able to reply. Okay. If no reply means you're still praying about it. <laughs> and uh, so, uh, I would say, if you are sincere, even without us, you can start claiming for Nigeria. Pray and walk in your country and, and keep claiming. Because here, God, God hears the prayers, not just our prayers. God hears because of Jesus Christ. And uh, James chapter 5 is for you. That the prayers of a righteous, godly man, God will hear. So you walk godly with God, you walk righteously, I'm sure God will hear your prayer. Verse uh, was <laughs> okay, two by four. Do you have any prophecy for India? Will there be any areas of refuge in India? The authors that we build, yes, we do have some things about India. Uh, India will also have an atomic bomb attack on it by Pakistan. Okay, I'm trying to look at the timeline when it actually happened. 
the area in vision that we saw, no, this world is getting horrible, isn't it? Nuclear weapons coming up. And the area that will be hit is New Delhi. And because of our knowledge of that, uh, of future knowledge, uh, our main church in India is actually in the south. I've shown some people the map of India, in the southern part. Uh, because we are avoiding the northern part, although we will send missions there. But because we know that in the future that area is going to be affected by a nuclear bomb that will happen. And then that is one thing about New Delhi. Second thing that we know, but I didn't say it's going to happen this year. I just say that there's a vision that we know that's going to happen. And uh, then the second thing is the law also say that the revival in India will actually come forth from China. For some reason, you ask me, I don't know. Why it should happen that way? All I know is that that's the direction that the, that's moving. And because China is still being built up, Kenneth is, uh, is building altars there. He's, he's moving this year to Guangzhou and Chaoqing, where our headquarters will be. So he's moving there this year to establish COG and, uh, and start praying there, building a church there. And so because we're just still doing that, that's why we haven't gone to India that much. Although we know there are many dear Christian brothers and sisters who love the Lord there. Let's keep praying. And uh, I, I know that uh, Kenny in Sydney's brother, uh, David, you're in India. So God is concerned for that to keep praying. But India has many good people who love the Lord. Uh, I know Dina Karan well in the days before he, he went home to be the Lord. You have good men like him who love the Lord and who are very spiritual men. So India has his ministers which are good. Uh, when do we start moving into the safe zones or refuge zones, right, I assume? And what will happen to those that remain in other places that aren't designated safe zones? Okay. The reason why we are moving people to the refuge zone, I call it refuge zone, is because of two reasons. Famine and war. And even though there will be some snippets of places in America that still has some water resources and some little farm, tiny little places where you can, in the mountainous area where you have some streets or all that, we don't recommend that because it will turn into a war zone. It will turn into a war zone. Find the, remember we have prophecy for US? The four different zones be a chaos zone in the middle. War is going on. No matter how fertile the ground, you don't want to be in it. And, uh, so because of war also, that is that. And, uh, so in terms of uh, those, what will happen remain in those places is either famine or war. And after the, the, the tsunami and earthquake in 2029, there are so many dead people that more people die of sickness and disease then the actual tsunami. Uh, nobody is able to help them because everybody needs help. A lot of airports don't work anymore. And in regions we saw, we have a ship that had to travel to places to try to rescue some people who are still left behind. Uh, so that's what the world is going to be like. Uh, and those are what happened to those regions. That is why we want to bring people out from the refuge areas. Uh, could you share more on the creation of groups of spirits, angels, human guardian angels, soulmates? How we are grouped together, like, is there a number within each group? God knows the numbers of every group. I've seen angels cre being created, they're different from humans. And it's like God, our creator, breathe off different attributes. And different attributes brought forth different types of spirits. Humans are the most complex because we need spirit, soul, and body. Angels, the creation, mainly revolve around spirit and souls. Animals, their creation, revolve around souls and physical bodies. So humans are very complex with spirit, soul, and body. And uh, so I would say that there are so many millions that I cannot see even the end of the number that is there. There are worlds in which there are people without eyes but still can see. Worlds in which there are people without mouth but still can speak because of their thoughts. And each, uh, they are humanoid looking but they all 
are different. And there is a planet where their legs are different. They don't look long like us. Their legs walk like, you know, circular. Two. Two. Right? Two legs. Two. <laughs> Two. <laughs> like cartoon, you see the cartoon of walking that way. Okay, but very smooth and elegant. Uh, and so they are of God's creation. That there's no end to it. Uh, but I would say that what we know is good so far. Uh, and, uh, so your question is quite general, so I will answer generally as it is. Uh, we see the canopy of power in Jesus' ministry and the apostles have power over different works of the enemy. But a wisdom canopy is rarer. Is there such an English word, rarer? <laughs> okay, uh, 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 English, you want an English uh, 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 More rare, yes. Okay. Where people get wiser in the canopy. How about this revival? Well, in this revival, you have the release of spirit of wisdom. I remember Ephesians 6. In Ephesians 6, the church specializes in a manifold wisdom of God. Ephesians 6, Ephesians 3. Where it says, Paul says, this is the mystery in the church. That the manifold wisdom of God is manifest in the church for all the principalities and powers to see. So the church may bring forth the wisdom of God. And Jesus, of course, is the manifestation of the wisdom of God. Uh, so the church will especially, the bride of Christ, manifest the wisdom of God. So it's, it's because wisdom is needed in everything. That if you ask for a canopy, it's a very big canopy to cover everyone. Uh, no. That's why it's so big you can't see it. Uh, but there is a canopy. It, is there any possibility that the Lord would behold the late future prophecy should there be disobedience as it's happened in 2015? Are all future prophecies conditional even though we may not be aware of such condition? I would say generally yes, except for some timelines. Like the tsunami in 2029, 100%. Don't depend on that. Uh, the 2027 war, going to happen. Civil war, 2000, around 2021, 22, definitely we are prayed and whatever can be prayed can be, has been done. And in terms of the presence of God and all this, yes, it's still conditional upon our obedience. But I can tell you, when you make mistakes, second chance from God, dangerous. We get one thing I show you, we are not going to make the same mistakes. Right? To make the same mistake twice means you never learn from the first mistake. And uh, so we know what the Lord wants us to do, and we're more careful with that. Uh, and no, I, I, would, I wouldn't think we would do the same mistakes. And there's no room now for that. Is that a question coming from the floor? Yes. <coughs> Me and Russia having gone to 2029. No, China and Russia having gone to 2029. To, uh, China and Russia will be great powers from 2000 and uh, in the war years, yes. they will get grow very powerful. Against each other. They will fight each other only after 2034, for a few years. Okay, that war will India be on whose side? Okay. India will be actually on Russia's side. Why are you very concerned? Con concerned. <laughs> Okay, okay. India will have a great influence from Russia. Yeah, Russia will dominate. As Jesus came for the salvation of human, can we consider Adam was created for the salvation? Huh? Lucifer. Lucifer. That's the thing. Jesus came for salvation. Can we? That means, in other words, we are trying to save Satan from that question. No way, Jose. <laughs> No way! Satan cannot be saved because he has no conscience. They do, you know, we humans, no matter how wicked you are, still got a tiny bit of conscience. Although many people's conscience are seared. Can you imagine a creature who doesn't even have a conscience existing? That's what Satan and demons are like. That's why there's no redemption. They don't feel the pain of wrong. Even the most wicked man cannot sleep at night. They sleeping pills, drugs, whatever. Because all the wickedness, and always feeling this guilt, 
they don't feel guilt. All these are produced from our conscience. Humans are created differently. That's why we can be safe. He cannot be safe. And uh, within COG, with all pastors being able to manifest in all the 90s of the spirit, uh, you're talking about COG 6 billion people or COG right now? <laughs> Which is very tiny. Okay. So, in terms of the future, COG, where we have 10 churches all over the world, millions of members, all that, yes, the top round gifts of the spirit are like kacang putih. They just walk and say, yeah. except they don't misuse their gift. Because most of them can see in the spirit. And so, World communication, let me look at time to make sure we don't eat the evening service. World communication is in a sense be extended to those with the spirit of the to the to those outside the spirit of the twelve, because the twelve has the communication. So I assume your question is will it be extended to people outside the twelve? Yes. To those who can tap into the spirit. And who wrote the book of Job? Job. <laughs> <laughs> okay. But then, how can he know the first part? Because hindsight. Later on, it was shown to him. Later on, it was shown to him. But the ending of some parts are like, his family finish it off. Like, how can Moses wrote, and Moses died? <laughs> you know, and then Shahana said, if he died, how can he wrote my son dying? Okay, the last part was finished off by Joshua. But Joshua, I remember, it's so much of Joshua in the ending in chapter 34. This is because Joshua helped me to finish part and ended the book. Uh, now. So, Job. Uh, Job, in hindsight, knew about everything. You know when he discovered it? After he was blessed. But when he was going through at that time, he didn't know. Remember, he, he shut his mouth and then later he had a revelation and he told it. Now, he might not have personally wrote it. Just like the Gospel of Mark is not is Peter's Gospel, but Peter didn't write it. Mark wrote it for him. Mark never was a disciple of Jesus among the twelve, but Mark wrote it because Peter, Peter is a fisherman, he's not a scholar, so Mark was the one to write for him. And the same way, Job could call one of his children or children or whatever to write for him, but it's mainly Job's story, and he got the revelation and passed it down to his children, and he got written. It's a lot. We finish. Eh? The end for now. Okay, thank you. Oh, I just saw this. I didn't see that one. Okay. 22. When God created both matter and antimatter. How do you know God created antimatter? Okay. So, does it mean He also created character like humility and pride, right? Uh, humility and pride. Now, all matter and antimatter, I regard antimatter as also solid. Except it's reversed. So all anti matter and antimatter is in a physical dimension. And uh, according to Romans chapter 1, verse 20, it tells us that all creation show the attributes of God. So everything reveals something about God. Every tree, every plant, every creation. That's why when all animals are created to reveal the various attributes possible for soul. Like horse, uh, donkey, it's the zeal of a horse versus the stubbornness of a donkey, wise as serpent, harmless as doves, and uh, meek as a lamb. So the word meek is tied to the lamb. So all these are qualities that can develop in animals. Every animal represents something. Then every plant represents something. Uh, like Jesus is the vine, we are the branches. Palm trees represent righteousness. Different fruits represent different things. And only when Ariel, Ariel has been downloaded, where Estakuta Al gave him some things to eat. So one day Ariel find hard to wake up because he's supposed to sleep four hours and then spend the rest of the time with God. So he, he's working very hard. He's also doing a secular job. And so one fine day, uh, Estakuta Al keep giving him these artichokes. Then he said, hey, where's Aticho? Then uh, Estakuta says, discipline. <laughs> so I didn't know that. Until that was really, I didn't know that. That each plant represents something. And I still am trying to discover what the durian represents. <laughs> 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 oh, 
or the coconut tree. <laughs> but every plant represents a spiritual attribute. If you discover it, please let me know. I know apples represent love because it's in the Bible. When you talk about apples, it talks about love. So some trees, but because coconut tree do not mention in the Bible. <laughs> so uh, we need the second, you know, we need your experiences to be able to discover those qualities. Praise the Lord. So we're finished. Praise the Lord. And uh, so uh, we encourage you to continue to spend a lot of time praying. Waiting on the Lord is important is this, in this year. Uh, because the Lord wants to download and the Lord wants to minister into our lives with outpouring. This year, when I say outpouring, you know, outpouring are reserved for certain time. You can be too early and it's not time for outpouring. Remember, on the day of Pentecost, when the day of Pentecost had fully come, that means when you didn't fully come, even if you're all eager, still cannot receive. But this year is a timing where it's very important. That the Lord actually opened the windows of heaven and pouring something out. To whosoever willing to receive, you will receive something. Because this is a transition. And transition year, God releases and opens the floodgates. Whoever wants to receive, can receive. And uh, it's different from last year. This year is different. It's actually releasing some things from heaven itself. Let's go to God in prayer. Father, we thank you for your grace and your mercy. Establish your goodness upon our lives. Let your perfect will always be done. Teach us your mercies. Establish your work in us. And strengthen each one of your people to love you with all their heart, mind, soul, and strength. We love you, Father. And we love you fervently. We love you, Father. And we love you passionately. We love you, Father. And we love you with all of our hearts. All our mind, soul, and strength is the only way we know how to live this Christian life. We're all tired of all the various forms of Christianity that we keep seeing around, compromising different things. We just only want Jesus, the Bible, in all your fullness. Thank you, Father. Seal this into each life. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. God bless you.